and say nothing to them about Jesus as Lord. People who know Jesus is Lord and follow Jesus as Lord tell others Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and that's that. Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez, and today we are doing yet another Pastor Reacts in our Pastor Reacts video series. Today we are reacting to David Platt, and he is going to basically present a three-step plan for how you know you're saved. This video originally is uh, about 38 minutes, I think. And he starts, the person who sent it to me said, watch around 28 to 34 minutes. Uh, so we did. And I always want to be transparent with you. I struggle with trying to figure out what this whole sermon is about. And I do not mean that to mock him, but it's just hard to follow. So Trent does all the editing and cutting. And we, again, I want to say, we we present a copy to you that is not messing up the original sermon. I know if you already disagree with me, you're just going to find a way to make me a liar out of that. And that's fine. But when we, when I watch the clip and then I watch the whole sermon, I still am not understanding where he's going. He uses a lot of stuff in Mark that we don't include here. Uh, well, actually we do. It's just later on, but obviously his thing is we got to You got to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And we need to see that in order to make sure you're really saved. So let's uh, pull into this video here. Do you believe that Jesus is not just a man, but God in the flesh? Not just a good religious teacher, but God himself. If not, then you're believing a counterfeit gospel. Now that is, you know, you know that's something that's accurate. And First John combats a lot of this theory that was going around. And I believe it was the seed of Satan that... Jesus didn't really have any kind of divinity. It came on him at his baptism, and then this Christ divinity left him at the cross. Uh, Jesus is God in the flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We, be saw, we, we saw him, we beheld his glory. Um, and that's in the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. But in 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1, John says this, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. And so I want to make sure we see that because what he says there, it is correct. If you're just believing on Jesus as a man and you don't believe that he's God, well, then he can't pay for your sins. You might as well trust me to pay for your sins because as Romans 5 says, we're all born under sin. Even though we didn't sin after the similitude of Adam, we're all born into sin. And again, it's very rare, but it does happen. There are people who believe Jesus as a good teacher, but that he's not God in the flesh Islam is a major one. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, to an extent, I don't want to say that's what they believe, but they really do try to separate between Jesus and God. Uh, Mormons, same thing. And so I agree with him on this point, but this is where the choo-choo train goes off the tracks. Let's take a listen. But that's not all. Because, well, just think about the book of James in the Bible later points out, even the demons believe this. And they haven't received the gospel. Okay, so David, <laughs> it's because the demons, there's no salvation available to them. What's the focus of James chapter 2? You say you have faith and that faith will save you from a loss of reward at the judgment seat of Christ, but your faith is not going to save you from that judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't forget, if you have not subscribed to Bible Line yet, make sure that you do. Hit that red subscribe button and the notification bell, set it to all so that you get a notification anytime we post anything, go live. Make sure that you're aware of that. And then like, comment, and share this video to get us into the algorithm to lead more people to clarity in the gospel. 
And if you have a video like this that you'd like us to react to, or you have a question about a Bible verse, send it to us in an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. Let's get back to today's reaction. Thou believest that there is one God, James 2.19. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The illustration here is not that the demons have believed in the oneness of God. Therefore, salvation is available to them if they would just have works. That's not, that's not what is being said here. What is being said here, you got to back it up into verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Dead does not mean it's not recognized by God. It's profitless. It will generate no, uh, nothing that can be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. Yea, a man may say, so now James is creating this objector, whether it's a real person or not, doesn't matter. He's trying to get a point across. Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Go into the next verse. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Is your faith enough to save you from this coming judgment, this rewarding stand, which is at the judgment seat of Christ? Faith in and of itself is not what saves a person. It is the object of faith, which is Jesus Christ. The demons believe in, in God and in Jesus' divinity. Look at all the examples in the uh, Gospels of when demons were killed. Uh, uh, torn or rent out of people and they're like oh is the judgment now thou son of man thou son of all this stuff and jesus tells them to keep their peace because he's rolling out a plan here but to say that okay well you've believed but it's not enough because the demons believe too that's trying to plug two things together that are not that's putting a three-pronged plug in a two-prong outlet it's not going to work they're not the same thing and you'll see he proves it here in just a moment so if you believe Jesus is Lord, that still doesn't mean you have the gospel in your heart. You're and you can see here when he says, if you believe Jesus is Lord, that's what he thinks the gospel is. It's believing that Jesus is Lord. And I say again, and I know that you hear this all the time, but it's because this text is very important. Matthew chapter 7 tells us, Lord, Lord, ain't enough. You've got to believe on Jesus Christ. Believing that he's Lord is not salvation. You got to believe on his death, burial, and resurrection for the payment of your sin. But we can see he doesn't even have to really tell us that lordship is salvation to him. We're now at the same level as demons are. Does your life show Jesus is your Lord? Do your actions and your motives show that Jesus is your Lord, the king of your life? Do you wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, you are Lord of my life today? I don't mean to roll my eyes or be disrespectful to David Platt, but this is just, it's, it's so blind. Um, you can very easily see here how it works. He's teaching a works-based salvation. But there are specific verses in the Bible about people saying things, but their heart is far from God. And just because... He's saying, do you wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, your Lord, is it a checklist? Like then we, you know, like we wake up in the morning and go confess Jesus's Lordship, brush my teeth, uh, trim my beard, put on these, these clothes. It's like a checklist of things. That's not salvation. Isaiah 29, 13 says this, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, with their lips, do honor me but have removed their heart far from me. And Jesus quotes this in Matthew 15, 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with, with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There is a real case to be made that the person who simply says Jesus is Lord is doing nothing but lip service. Saying that Jesus is Lord over and over and over again doesn't make it true for you. It's not vain repetition. Salvation is belief on Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for the payment of your sin. He says, well, you know you're really saved if does your life show it? And that can only be done by works. I mean, that's what James says. Show me your works. So you, you show me your faith. Show me by your works. And we know in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
Romans 11, 6. It's either all grace or, or all works. It can't be both because it cancels each other out. But that's not what is flashy. That's not what a, is, is attractive. You know, you got to have all this introspection. Let's let him continue. I love you. I want you. I want to follow you. I almost have a hard time believing that he believes what he's saying. Because like the, the, the way that he's doing this, it's like, are you just saying what's coming to your mind? I love you. I'm for you. <laughs> How is that salvation? This is not salvation, folks. This is vain repetition deception. I want to do everything you call me to. I care about what you think of me, not what others think of me. I live for you as my Lord. If there are areas of our lives where we're living in direct disobedience to God's word with no desire for repentance, then is Jesus really Lord of our lives? That's a good question to ask for disciples, for people who are already saved. You know, that's what 1 John is about. You got all these things that you say about me, but your actions don't don't uh, match up. You need to change your mind and start obeying. But it's not about salvation. And obviously none of us is perfect. And that there's the little, you got to get that in there because I think he realizes, well, then we'd have to be perfect. But obviously none of us are perfect. But God will make grace. I remember I was talking to a guy before, uh, or uh, not make grace, but he will show grace. I was talking to a guy before that he learned that God's grace was him doing his part and God would fill in the rest. And I remember getting chills when I heard that because that is the most deceptive definition of grace. <laughs> Adding a little bit of man's work and then don't worry about it. What you don't get, God will just forgive you for it. God doesn't work like that. There needs to be a payment. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Only Jesus is. That's the point, though. If Jesus is Lord of our lives, then we are wanting to become more and more like him. Right, because this is discipleship. This is, it's a progressive uh, sanctification, you know, where we're denying the lust of the flesh, we're walking in the spirit, we're having fellowship with one another, we're sharing our faith with people, people are coming to faith in Christ, we're suffering together, we're doing all these things, we're becoming more and more like him, but that's not salvation salvation is a one-time believe receive as a matter of fact if we go to first john chapter 5 and verse 13 you can see that pretty clearly these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life so believing on jesus christ brings about the knowledge that you have eternal life his lordship your commitment to follow him your commitment to obey his word that's all discipleship. That's all a part of our ongoing progressive sanctification. But David Platt makes it about, it is your salvation. You know, like that's how you get eternal life. We're not content with the areas of our lives that don't look like him. Is it possible for people, even professing Christians, to use religion, church activity in the past or the present, as a cover-up for living how you actually want to live? Or is Jesus mm -hmm. truly Lord of your life? Again, I'm not trying to bring down the man, but I think that's exactly what he's doing. It's exactly what he's doing and what many people are doing. They're saying, all my works cover up for my sin. This is what pays for my sin in a way that's evident in every facet of your life. Evident to who? To other people. This is, this is why these mega churches and stuff, you know, it, it, it's all about the outward appearance, but what's going on in here? What's going on up here? What do you believe about Jesus? That's what you're going to be judged by. Do you tell others Jesus is Lord? If you know Jesus is Lord, that he's God in the flesh who came to save us from our sins. And if you're following Jesus as Lord over your life, then you tell others about him, right? I don't know. Do you? Because what are you telling about Jesus Christ 
if it's not necessarily about what Jesus Christ did, that's how you're saved. It's about what you've done. Won't you just continue doing more good works so that people see your good works and they should glorify the father in that, but they really just glorify you. I just want to remind you of a very basic thing here in Romans chapter three and verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just, God is just, and the justifier of him that what? Believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But everything we're looking at here from David Platt is works, works, works. Then you can see why Paul said earlier in chapter 1 of Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But no, the three-step process is, do you believe Jesus is Lord? Does your life show that Jesus is Lord? Do you tell others Jesus is Lord? I, I'm, I'm being honest here. I just feel like this is a grab bag of stuff. And it was like, here's what we need to do. It's hard to follow him. I was telling Trent, we were reacting to this video. It's like, it's hard to follow what, what he's really saying. Because I don't even know if he believes it. You're passionate about doing this, right? Because you know he's not just Lord over you. He's Lord over all. Surely we can't be around people and know that their eternity hinges on confessing Jesus as Lord. Your eternity does not hinge on confessing Jesus as Lord. Your eternity hinges on do you have a payment for your sin? His Lordship does not save you. You believing that he is Lord does not save you. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. The only ones who are getting into heaven is they've got a covering for their sin. And say nothing to them about Jesus as Lord. People who know Jesus is Lord and follow Jesus as Lord Tell others Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and that's that. Again, um, maybe there's some of you out there that are a little sharper than I am and can see through this. But, uh, you know, the way that I grew up, I heard a lot of repenting of your sin. You need to turn from your sin, turn from your sin, turn your, from your sin. Confessing that Jesus is Lord is not something I learned was even a salvation invitation by people until I started coming under clear teaching. And it always sounded odd to me because it doesn't matter what you believe about his lordship. Okay. You, you, the problem between us and God is our sin separates us from God. And what Jesus did on the cross is to pay for that sin. He's coming back. Hallelujah. He is coming back. I believe that is true. My belief that he's coming back does not save me. What saves me is, man, what Jesus did on the cross and what he did with his burial and resurrection, that was for me. That paid for my sin. And I've got verse after verse after verse that says, if I believe on him and that what he did, I receive the free gift of everlasting life. And I've got it right now. That has enabled me to believe that he's coming back. And he is the Lord of my life. And I do live to show that. But that is not to make sure I'm triple you know, doubly saved, you know, like I have submitted to him as the, the, the Lord and master of my life. Cause he paid for my sins, man. That's awesome. Praise God. And my submission to him as Lord is my decision to follow him and yield to him because I know he will reward me and I know he wants to reward me and he'll get all the praise, honor, and glory. But that's not why and how I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved because that tomb is empty. That blood has been applied. And it's just sad to see videos like this because, like I said, it's confusing. It makes things, you know, complicated. It becomes a checklist, you know, and, and that, that's not what the Bible says. If you have a question or a video like this, please send it to us. Questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. That's our email address. And don't forget, too, 
make sure that you're locked in here at Bible Line. Subscribe. Get all that stuff in there because we want you to see when these videos come out because you may know somebody who's suffering with this stuff. But uh, until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Take care. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.